Hey everybody, VampCalf back again. Today I'm going to be replacing an ESC on my Eishin Wizard X220. Uh, all I did was peel off one of the stickers and I found the code on the back that led me to this ESC. So Eishin just uses a rebranded, I think this is, what is this? Race Star RS20A VL Heli S, and my version of the ro or my version of the Wizard needs the uh, version two of this ESC, and this comes pre-flashed with the belly with the BL BL belly uh, the BL Heli S uh, firmware. So that way, if you can't program your quadcopter, all you have to do is unsolder the old ESC, solder the new one. So let's go ahead and tear this apart and get our new ESC so we can get this bad boy up in the air. Okay, so the things you're going to need for this are the ESC, of course. And that's the Race Star version 2. The reason, and the way you're going to be able to find out if you need the version 1 or the version 2, let's go ahead and peel the sticker off of your old ESC and you'll see right here where it says V1.2. That 2 right there is why I need the version 2 of this. So if it says 1.1, there at the very last two numbers, if it says one point V1.1, then you need the version 1 of the race star. All right, And that's if you can't flash your own firmware. Uh, you're also going to need 2 millimeter hex, pop off the bolts on the bottom of the motor and if you want you don't have to but 10 millimeter shrink tube to go over the new ESC alright and then to get into this old one all we're gonna do is cut off this old shrink tubing you don't have like I mean I don't know how else to get to the leads so and this one's this ESC is junk now so it doesn't matter if we scratch up the board or mess up anything at all because yeah, she's junk well, this isn't working there we go so get in there. Unsolder the first motor. Or unsolder the first. Unsolder the motor. Sorry for the noise of the 3D printer in the background. <laughs> Making a trailer for my RC boat for my crawler. Get out there this weekend and have some fun towing it around. But uh, let's see here. And then unsolder the leads. We're gonna go ahead and I could just unsolder it from the board which is what I probably should do. Yeah, why don't I do that? It'd be a lot easier. All right, so I'm not gonna bore you with this, but I gotta take this top pan, or I gotta top, take this top plate off. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this top plate off. And on the back here, you'll see all of the ESCs, their white wire, the, uh, well, I don't know what that is. If it's a negative, it's a positive, whatever. All I know is that needs to come off. Okay. Good. Come in here on the other board. It's a positive and a negative down here. Negative. Positive. Okay. 
these wires come pre-tinned so you don't have to put any solder onto these leads but I am gonna have to cut this what do you call that RX or JLT whatever I can't remember what this plug is called JLR but this is gonna have to come off because this this uh, black wire is worthless to me I don't need it so that's gonna get unsoldered or just cut because it's just like doubling up with this with the ground so I don't need that wire because that's not how this the Eishin wizard is set up and uh, let's see here also I'm gonna have to tin these wires at the after I cut them off so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that if you're uh, if you don't know so let's get this let's get these wired up right away Come on, baby. There we go. Well, those leads are really long. Let's make them shorter. Eh, that should be fine. If I run into a problem, we may have to shorten these leads, but this should be okay. Eishin should be okay. Wow, that was dumb. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, how long has this got to be? Long enough. So, cut off a little chunk of this. Go ahead and untangle this mess. I guess what I could do is just run this black wire to the ground on the board, but it kind of seems pointless. So this guy can come undone. We don't need it. I'm gonna strip this wire. Good old fashioned way of using my teeth. Use a wire stripper, that's probably better. Cut off the access wire. I don't use um, I don't I don't use solder that comes pre-fluxed because it never works for me. I should use it with electronics because flux is very acidic and I could run into problems with that. But I've never liked solder that's pre-fluxed. So I drip, drip a little drop of flux on there. Put a little bit of solder onto your soldering iron. Just a little bit, you're not gonna need much. Oh, it's not even gonna work. And tin your wire. And all this is gonna be, the reason why you wanna pre-tin your wire is because then you just you have something for the solder to bite onto already. So let's see if I can. Yeah, we don't need that much wire. We cut a little bit more off. Correct. My big big fat hands in the way. Sorry. <laughs> let's move this move this camera a little bit. There we go. So I'm just going to hold that in place. Let's 
solder it to the board. Okay. Can go ahead and put this back. Let me feed this wire through there. Tuck all your wires in. What's that one? Tuck all your yeah, tuck all your wires back under there. What's the deal? There we go. And I'm just going to put a couple of these nuts on just to hold this plate in place. Sorry for the light being so low. It's kind of late. on my table I'm gonna yell at <laughs> so these leads are already open on the motor so all we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna try to tin these I don't know if I need to but I'm going I'm going to anyways so I'm gonna tin the uh, I'm gonna tin the leads see if I can't zoom in I'm gonna tin the leads on the ESC And all tinning means is just putting a nice coat of flux on the ESC. Or a nice coat of flux on the ESC. A nice coat of flux on whatever you're trying to solder to. And all that's just going to probably corrode my board, but... I should really get some solder that's pre-fluxed, but not an issue. I mean, for as quick as this ESC burnt, I can under I can I can see how I'm gonna have to go through a lot more ESCs with this thing. A lot of people suggest that you put in a failsafe because I think what was happening was when I was crashing. The motors were still going and it caused a current spike or something caused it to keep going and then since it was being held it was causing too much of a there was nowhere for the current to discharge and I think that's what fried it uh, I could be wrong but oh damn I didn't put the shrink tube on that went really well and I gotta undo them all all right. Always put the shrink tube on first. <laughs> That's too much. All right, too much, too much. Like I said, it's a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter shrink tube. Let's zoom out again. 10 millimeter shrink tube. Go ahead and solder these leads up again. Not, you didn't do it right unless you did it twice, right? No, that's that can't be a saying. Okay, so now we got the motor all soldered back up. We got the shrink tube on, finally. Then go ahead and uh, slide that over so it's covering the leads. Shrink it. So now I'm going to just reassemble it, fire it up and see if it works. Okay, so we got everything put back together and everything's installed. So let's see if it works. All right. Before this was barely turning and it's in the right direction.
Yep, everything's in the right direction.